It's my homage to Eugene Levy. Shit's Creek now streaming, not sponsored. Oh my God, this is the best. <laughs> it looks like an ordinary tree, but, but I'm, I'm not. not. You gotta take what you get for free, <laughs> Grandma. Watch, there's like money back here. I'm very happy with those. Sorry. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. The winter is officially here. It's snowing outside, which is why we're not gonna be doing this intro outside our thrift store. No, I know, we usually film this outside the thrift store. And guys, this is our longest running series. It actually is. I think it's the first series we ever came up with. Make sure you check out the playlist below of our other thrift flips. Comment in the <laughs> comments below if you know what the first thrift flip was, because I want to know who remembers. I remember. I remember. Um, okay, so today, since it is kind of wintry outside, we're going to jump into holiday content. As you can tell, our background is now holiday-ified. So we're going to be doing a holiday decor edition of thrift flip. Yes, I'm so excited because this is going to get us in the spirit, even though I don't know if you guys want to be in the spirit yet, but we're going to make it happen. <laughs> All right, let's head to the thrift store and see what we find. I don't know if you can even really tell. <laughs> it looks like an ordinary tree, but, but I'm, I'm not. not. I hate it. I hate it too. Turns out I'm 100% not an ordinary tree. <laughs> Okay, so two seconds into the store, Kelsey's distracted already on her own shopping. So we'll just start in the decor aisle ourselves. <laughs> so much Christmas stuff already. Like, what is this? I don't get it. 2000 is the grandpa, 2001 <laughs> is the new snowman. Like, it's the new millennia. I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is nice, but I don't know. Oh, you put a candle on it. It's cute. Donating it already? That makes me sad. <laughs> that card, though. But my grandma said that she wants three wreaths at her house. And they're too expensive at the traditional places. So I don't know, maybe I can make her one. She has spaces for three wreaths? Grandma. I know. Get it. <laughs> I think this one I could like make cuter. Because I like the base, which is like this thick green stuff. Oh it God. comes with all the pieces in it. Oh with, the, with the beachy flair. Terrazzo. Terrazzo. That's amazing. <laughs> What? <laughs> it's for darts, but also baseball, and it's a skunk. I am confusion. Why is this the thing with pictures of pots on it? That's weird. Dear Santa, I have been good this year. Just like hold on here. One. Can you remember to tell please? Confusion. This is just so simple. It's just a plug-in light base, but like, I don't know if we can put something over it, make it like a snow globe or something. Ellen collabed with Ikea. <laughs> Hello, Ellen DeJernes. Ellen DeJernes. <laughs> really? <laughs> really. <laughs> All right, we are back with a pretty good haul that I'm very excited about. Yeah, we got some really cool things. I guess you want to start us off with what you found? Sure. Well, I picked up three wreaths because my grandma recently voiced that she wants some wreaths for the house, but they are very expensive if you want to buy them new at the craft store or at a decor store. They can be over $100. So these range from like $5 to $10. And my goal is to turn these three wreaths into something that looked like a set together. And this is going to be my main inspo because I actually really like the way this one is already. I'm not gonna do much to it. This is the most wholesome DIY request. Grandma wants some wreaths, so I'm gonna upcycle her some. I know, hopefully she's into them because I know she wanted larger wreaths, but these were the ones that were the nicest and kind of like work together. So you gotta take what you get for free, <laughs> Grandma. This was the last thing that we found on the way out, but I'm gonna talk about it just cause it's here and it's, it's Large, Large in charge. charge. <laughs> this is a wall clock, I think, or part of one. Maybe it sits on a mantel because it doesn't actually sit straight. Yeah. I think it's part of another part of the clock, but we only have the top here. <laughs> but when I saw it, this immediately gave me the thought of a tiny little fireplace, an apartment-sized faux fireplace, because this looks exactly like a little mantle and a little fireplace. Like, you can't tell me it doesn't. And this, considering it's actually a clock, was only $7. At the thrift store is all yeah. over with prices. I feel like this could be worth more. Well, it's because it's a very broken clock. That's true. Like, listen to this. What's in it? I don't know. We're gonna find out together. <laughs> I'm gonna put this down for a second and okay. we can carry on. 
So then another idea we had was Becky found this little uh, light bulb. It's so simple. I feel like it's weirdly hard to find simple light bulbs that just stand on a base on their own. And then we found this lampshade. So <laughs> ba-bam, you got a cute little light. So we're gonna do something fun with that. And then the last thing we're gonna do actually came from Inspo. I was browsing on Anthropology because their holiday section is like beautiful, but very expensive. And they had really quirky animal inspired stocking holders. And I thought that could be fun. Like it feels like a thrift store upcycle. So we went to the kind of knickknack aisle, mm -hmm. which is not an aisle we shop in that often, but I always knew there'd be a day where we need the things in those aisles and that's today. So we found a little collection of a little, I don't know, ceramic knickknacks. This little deer, we love kind of the way he is. This little, a, I was gonna say dove, but I think it's just a bird. And then this one is a bust of a little guy. I don't know who he is. I feel like it says, but it's kind of cracking off. If you know, if this your man's, claim him in the comments below. So I think we're gonna try and turn these into stocking holders. Okay. What should we start with first? I think you should start with the wreath. That'll be fun. Oh, I was gonna say you should start with the mantle, but I will start with the wreaths. So for the wreaths, like I said, this is my inspo. She cute already, I think it's simple, and since I'm doing three and one of them is gonna be a little more complicated, I'm fine with this being simplicity. Simple and simplicity. Simplistic. Simplistic. Yeah, that's, thank you, Becky. So I picked up Elf on the Shelf here, and it is also on a grapevine wreath base, I believe that's what it is, in my brief. Re brief re research. Wow, tongue twister. So I'm going to take off Mr. Elf and add some berries I picked up from the craft store to make it look like this one, Twizzies. This would be an inside joke, but you could do it. No, Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Kelsey always destroying the creatures, animals? Sorry, buddy. A little bit falling off. I'm actually going to leave on half of these little pine needles because I think it's kind of nice to bring in some green and I will use the other ones that I'm taking off on the other reef to make the match. Next up, I'm going to start weaving on the holly berries. Since they have a wire stem, it's really easy to attach them. And I'm using a couple of sprigs to go around the entire wreath and I'm even alternating directions as well to make it look natural. And wow, they now look like twinsies. I can't believe how well that turned out. They're maybe not identical twins, but they're definitely... What's fraternal. Frater fraternal? Maternal? Fraternal? I'm Googling it. Please let me know. <laughs> Don't put this in the video. Fraternal, F-R-A. Two ordinary siblings happen to be born at the same time. Wait, what? They may not be identical twins, but I would definitely say that they're fraternal twins from Mama Kelsey. <laughs> Whoa, weird. Ew. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Speaking of Mama, this is the real Mama. Um, this is the one that is the larger one, and if I'm knowing Grandma's vision, this will be like maybe more of a main center one when these are the supplementary wreaths. So my first step for this guy is to take off all of these berries, even though obviously we're going with the whole berry thing. These are like nasty foam berries and um, rocket candy, and I need to take it all off. I might keep the red roses though, though. They're cute. So I'm gonna take off all of these ugly foam berries and the um, rock candy. Really gross. <laughs> Becky's favorite. No, no. <laughs> and once that's off, this wreath is actually, has a really good base. I like the variety of needles. I'm actually gonna leave the red roses. I just think that they're really pretty and they look like really high quality, so those get to stay. I'm going to take some more of the red berries that I used for the other wreath and add that in coming out from the roses because I'm actually going to be doing a side accent wreath where the majority of it comes from the side. I mean, low key grandma might hang this upside down. I don't really have control over that, but in my vision, the roses are on the side. I layered in a bunch of berries using the stems to wrap themselves and you can even use some floral wire to also hold things in place. Once I had something that I was liking, I brought in some pine cones and attached those underneath the roses. So this is my final wreath and I really, really like it. And best of all is that it has its little babies that I think match so perfectly. They're not like all the same. They're very complimentary. 
same family. Um, I think this was an absolute huge success and what a savings for grandma. Hope you like it, grandma. Okay, wait, I forgot to add wreaths. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> wait, I actually um, forgot to add lights to my wreath. That was my plan, and I forgot to do that in my plan, so I'm gonna add these so that Grandma's house is lit. <laughs> So next up, we're gonna tackle this clock that we wanna turn into a tiny little apartment-sized faux fireplace mantle because as the story goes, Santa needs a fireplace to come into your house through. And if you don't have one, we can make one today with this. So, as it currently is, it's a, oh, currently a clock, but it's broken. So my first step is gonna to be to try and take apart the clock and I'm hoping that behind it is a similar space to what's going on down here. Watch, there's like money back here. <laughs> Imagine. Oh. What? <laughs> there's no money. Oh. But it's like Velcroed on. That makes my life so much easier. So I was able to get the clock out, which is amazing, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and take off any extra little bits that I don't want. And then I'm coming in with the sander just to take off the veneer a little bit because it is quite shiny and I wanna make sure that my paint sticks. So now the clock is looking less like a clock. I think we can start calling it the fireplace now. My next step is gonna be to paint it. So I am gonna use a technique that I saw McKenna do. I'm gonna link her channel below because she does great thrift market transformations. And she made over this trunk and used a combo of stone paint and white paint to get a white finish that looked kind of stone-esque. And I think turning this fireplace hearth mantle into something that has like a stone finish will make it look even more believable as a fireplace. So that's gonna be my next step, to do a layer of this stone finish spray paint, and then once it's dry, go over it with white. So once the stone spray paint was dry, I'm just using some white paint to go over it. I'm using a roller so we don't see any brush strokes. And then after that's dry, I'm coming in with some black paint and painting all of the inside parts. I think this really helps to give the effect that is, is truly a fireplace because Fireplaces are black and dirty inside because they get charred with fire. And then once all the paint was dry, the very last step is to go and add some keyhole hanging hardware to the back so that we can hang this in a corner. Okay, so this is how my little faux mantle fireplace has turned out. I actually love how that stone texture worked. Maybe it doesn't show up so well on camera, but in real life, it really does look like a stone piece instead of wood, which is awesome. And the black actually did so much to kind of make these like deep, Spaces. <laughs> I don't know, saying dark holes just sounds weird. Um, <laughs> and then the very last step to making this come to life is to make it look like a real fireplace. And that we're gonna do by adding some LED candles into one of the spaces here to give the vibe. But we also have a really fun twist if you're maybe more tech savvy on how we can do this look. So next up, we're going to tackle the stocking hook decorative pieces. Oh my God, I'm like strangling him, it's so awkward. The first step is to actually make them all the same color. Luckily, my birdie and my deer are already beige. So I'm going to make up a concoction to make my monsieur here also beige. To make the beige, I'm mixing white and brown and yellow. I'm just getting real crazy here, but also really not crazy because <laughs> we're making beige. Until I find the right color and then painting my little dude the beige color. Next up, I'm also going to make a kind of like corally color and green color to match the same colors that are on the deer here. So to do this, I'm using green and white and kind of any other color to make it. Actually, making colors is very difficult. This is what I learned today. Artists are no joke. If you like have an idea of what color you want, it's not easy to get there. But I made my green, I made my pink, my orangey pink, my coral. And then all I have to do is go ahead and paint my little dude. So on my dude, 
I'm giving him rosy cheeks, I'm making his mustache green, and also filling in his tie. And then because the other two animals have brown eyes, I thought brown eyes might look weird on this human, so I decided to go in with some brown eyebrows. And then on my bird, I decided to paint the beak pink and then the feathers green, just like sporadically. I think it looks like a little weird. I didn't really know what to do with the bird, so um, just please think it's cute. So now with my little guys painted, the next step is to add them to a hook. We need the hook part of the stocking hook. So I got these standard stocking hooks. You just kind of like put them around the mantle and that just makes it so that they don't fall. They're kind of fall proof. I think. Also, just don't put your very full stockings on the mantle. I don't know what you guys put. My mom always puts the full stockings. I mean, Santa Claus always puts the full stockings on the couch. Should I refilm that? Oh, We're not yeah. kids content. Yeah. Also, you don't want the chocolate that's inevitably in the stockings to melt on the fire. Anyways, I digress. We got these stocking hooks. I'm going to use a two-part epoxy to glue them to the base. And I'm also going to add some little rubber feet because the extra height that the hook gives them, I wanna make that up and make sure that the whole thing isn't wobbly. Oh my God, this is the best. Because, <laughs> Becky's like, <laughs> Becky, don't get even started how smart this is because how many of you out there buy mantle hooks and then maybe you add to your family, whether that's a pet or a child or a spouse or something. And then all of a sudden you have mix matched ones. These are mix ma mismatched and mix matched from the beginning. And then if you need to add more, you just go to the thrift store, get your little dude and then paint it up. It's so smart. I think it's a really good idea and I think they're really cute. Thank you for watching my TED talk. <laughs>